In Health Watch, a blood test for Alzheimer's has gone on sale. Clinicians usually rely on brain scans to diagnose the disease. This blood test by C2N Diagnostics is, however, not covered by insurance or Medicare. It costs about $1,250, but the company offers discounts based on income. It is the first test of its kind to reach the commercial market but it has not yet been approved by the FDA. So to discuss this, I wanna bring in Dr. Karen Abrashkin. She's a Northwell health physician who specializes in internal medicine. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, doctor. So the thing about uh, this test is that it's a blood test. And we, as we mentioned in the introduction, usually patients have to rely on a brain scan. That usually doesn't happen until they have been displaying symptoms for a very long time, concerning symptoms for a very long time. So this gives patients the opportunity to very early on find out whether or not what they might be calling a senior moment, we've all had those where you forget where you put your car keys or forget why you walked into a room, maybe something much more concerning. Could you briefly explain just how this test works? Good morning. Yes, that's right. So this test is a non-invasive test. Um, it's a blood test and it looks for the proteins that deposit in people's brains uh, and it's very commonly found in Alzheimer's disease. This is a blood test that looks for those same proteins that are found in the brain in the blood. So notably, the test has not been endorsed by the Alzheimer's Association yet. They're waiting for FDA approval and wider testing. And their vice president told the Associated Press, and these are his words, it's not quite clear how accurate or generalizable the results are. Do you agree with that? And, and what more do we need to see to feel more confident about this test? Yeah, I think there's two key steps that need to happen before this test really becomes more widespread. One is that we need to see the data that's being used to develop the test. We haven't seen that data yet, it hasn't been published, and so we don't know how sensitive or specific this test is for Alzheimer's. Um, and the second, as you mentioned, is that the test does need to be uh, cleared and approved by the FDA. That's really a stamp of approval um, that needs to happen before the test becomes more widespread. So here's the thing, there's no cure for Alzheimer's. And so my next question is, if this test works and if it becomes widely available, is there a benefit to, ha to getting the test? I know it's a lot cheaper, cheaper rather, and easier than the current test, but if you can't do anything about the progression, then what's the point? Yeah, I do think that it's very important to diagnose what's going on when somebody has uh, cognitive impairment. So understanding if it's Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. Um, there's different ways that you can support people who have Alzheimer's, and in the future, there may be more treatments for this illness. It's equally important to understand when somebody does not have Alzheimer's and to rule that out and to look for other causes of cognitive impairment. So either way, ruling in the illness or ruling out the illness is very important for any individual um, who's showing signs of cognitive impairment. And we are actually learning more and more about Alzheimer's. And there's a, a new study out, a new uh, UC San Francisco study that's linked Alzheimer's to air pollution levels from cars, from factories, power plants, wildfires even. What's the significance of this study? And does this square with what we know about the disease? Yeah, this is a very important study. Um, Alzheimer's is a multifactorial problem. That means that there's a lot of different things that go into this illness. There's a genetic component. Um, now we're seeing there's an environmental component. There's probably also a component of random chance. Understanding all of the different components will allow us to be able to understand the illness better, hopefully do things to reduce people developing this devastating illness. Um, and it also points to the fact that climate change and other, other influences in our environment do have real impacts on human health. Yes, the more we know, the more we can change, the more we can hopefully reduce the number of people that are afflicted. Uh, Dr. Karen Abraskin, thank you so much. Thank you.